Hello everybody, welcome to the second episode of the Tech Medicine tutorial video series. Uh, in today's lesson, I'm going to be showing you guys how to test to see if your computer is overheating or has overheating problems. Now, what might interest you in doing this is if your computer is spontaneously shutting down or blue screening or it's starting to get really sluggish or uh, it either hangs or freezes uh, that being where your mouse won't move around it'll be completely locked um, what you want to do is go ahead and download four programs that I use now not only are we going to check the temperatures of the computer computer components but we're also going to stress test the processor and the graphics card as these are the two most common uh, components that will overheat. So we're going to go ahead and I've already googled these for us so CPU ID is a program we want to download. Now these are all fairly small programs so you shouldn't worry about the download size too much. So it's CPU ID. Now we're going to go ahead and click on this. And remember from my last video always use the official links to software and just hit the download now button actually this one over here uh, Windows, yep alright now we want to click on setup English, it's 32 and 64 bit that's for the executable not the zip file and then click download now okay and you'll see CPU is now downloading shouldn't take too long, it's a small file and we're going to go ahead and download heavy load so it's just heavy and load, one word and it's by Jam Software so click on there okay it's a little easier to download on here, all you have to do uh, choose your operating system 64 bit or 32 bit mine's a 64 so download that file and again using the exe okay that download has started down here and then Fermark next on the list this is by ozone3d.net so click on their official link and then just press download Fermark okay now we need to choose uh, download Geeks 3D, this big yellow button here, click on that and the download will start. And last on the list is Hardware Monitor, so this is the program that is actually going to tell us the temperature of our components, so we're going to go ahead and download that, again use the official link and it is down here, set up 64-bit and 32-bit for the EXE and then download. And in the meantime, as those download, I'm going to go and install these. So click on them and run. Just click through, pressing next. I agree. Next. Next. Um, I'll just use a desktop icon and then hit next. Okay. Now we want to hit launch heavy load. And then we'll just minimize this so it's there in the background when we need it. Then the CPU installation, uh, CPU Z, click on that, hit run. Okay, press next, I accept, next, 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 and create desktop icon is already checked, so I'm going to go next and install. Now we don't want to view the CPU Z readme, so you close that and finish. Okay, now those two are installed. Hardware monitor, that's finished down here. So again, flash run, next, next. Uh, the folder already exists. I've already installed the program, but I'll do it again anyway, just to show you the process. Create desktop icon and install. And then click finish when you're done. And we'll just wait a few seconds for Firmark to finish. Okay, open that again. Actually, I'm going to untick this because I don't want it to keep asking me. 
and then click run. Next, I accept the agreement. Next, next, and yes again. Next, and I want the desktop icon, and then press next again and install. Now we're all done. Click next and launch Firmark as well, and then finish. Okay, now we have all the programs installed and downloaded, so I'm going to go ahead and close the browser. Okay, here is Firmark. I'll close this. This was just one I opened before that I didn't need. Okay, so we've got Firmark, we've got Heavy Load. Now it's good if you have a nice big screen. I've got a 27 inch, so I've got a lot of room to play. Uh, so I've got Firmark, Heavy Load. Now we need CPU, ID, and Hardware Monitor. Okay, that's all four of our programs. So I'm going to start the tutorial now with using CPUZ. This is an excellent program to find out what your computer is uh, constructed from components wise. Uh, it just has everything in one program so it's very nifty. You don't have to go searching through uh, different menus in your operating system. So you can see I'm on an Intel Core i5-4460. Now what you want to understand is that there's different recommended temperature ranges for different processors. Um, it varies whether it's Intel or AMD and it also varies per model. Sometimes it can be quite su substantial. Um, so what I do is just copy the Intel Core i5-4460 into Google and it will tell you the maximum temperature. So just write Intel Core i5-4460 maximum temperature or you can just write max temp and google that. Now go into one of these forums and as you can see on here someone will tell you the max temp. Um, computer forums can be very helpful as well, I use them quite a lot. Okay. So on here it says basically, so long as you don't go over 75 degrees, then you should be okay. Uh, then this guy said he's quoted Intel on this one. Uh, it's always better to use the official pages just for more accurate data. Uh, so the temperature should be quoted in here somewhere. Okay, 72.72 is the maximum they recommend and that's the maximum safe temp for long-term usage. Your CPU won't just you know, light on fire if you, as soon as you hit that temperature it will go higher but it's just not recommended to do so, especially for long periods of time. So now I know 72.72, I'm going to go ahead and close that. So look over to here on CPU ID hardware monitor. Now what I'll do is, you notice here is this is my motherboard so I'm just going to close the voltages, close the fans, and then that's going to tell me what my motherboard temperature is, and that's nice and cool at the moment. I'm going to drag this down just so I can see more of it. Okay, and then here's my CPU, Intel i5-4460. Just minimize the voltages, and these other things, power, clock, utilization, this is just so I can see it all on one page with a little bit less mess going on. And again, clocks and utilization here. And I'm just going to minimize the hard drive so it's not really necessary to see. Now the two main components that will overheat and produce the most heat in your system are your graphics card and your processor. Okay, and They're both relatively easy to fix as well, so it's not a big thing to stress about in most cases can just be dust in the fan or it needs new thermal paste or a new cooler. So as you can see, uh, my temps at the moment here, uh, look under value, it says that I'm at about 44 to 45 degrees um, across all my cores and this will tell you the maximum I've got so far this session that the program's been running. So about 50 degrees to 55 degrees. So that's not too shabby. Um, you know, it could be better, but it's an acceptable temperature range for this processor. It's nowhere near the maximum. Now, what we're going to do is, this is, um, sorry, one thing I didn't explain. 
these are what you would call idle camps basically it's where you're not really running any intensive programs your computer's just sitting there and um, that's like your will be your lower end ranges of the temperature um, and then once you start running programs like games or uh, you know watching movies video processing editing photos or uh, stress testing like with heavy load you'll see that your temps start to go up substantially so I'm going to go ahead and move on to heavy load now because we're going to test the maximum temperatures that we get on the CPU so just go along to here and what you want to do this will normally be checked here for the GPU we just want to uncheck that box so it's no blue around it all we want is the CPU tested now I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button and this will start stress testing my CPU. Basically what this does is just runs a complex uh, mathematical algorithm that chews up the performance on the processor and makes it heat up. So as you can see the temps jump straight up and now I've actually exceeded the maximum temperature on this computer. Um, the max temp is 77 up here and it says to keep it below 72.7. So this is on a stock cooler with the stock thermal paste on at the moment. Now as you can see I've hit 80 degrees on some of my cores and uh, this would not be recommended to keep it this hot for a long period of time. So if you're going to be spending hours and hours gaming you may have to consider getting a new CPU cooler or changing the thermal paste or just giving the system a dust out to remove any uh, cloggages in the heat sink or the fan on the processor because that's you know, quite disturbing, it's almost gone up to 90 degrees. So this system definitely needs a tune up. Now I'm going to, uh, for people, sorry, for people who don't have that bad temperatures, like mine noticeably skyrocketed, but for people who are a slow climb, I'd recommend leaving heavy load going for 30 minutes to an hour, and just to make, this, make sure the system stays below the required temperature ranges. But for now, as you can see mine's already almost at 90 degrees so it's overheating so I'm going to stop all these running tests by pressing the stop button and now you'll see my temperatures go back down okay now what we're going to do is you'll notice that this temperature down here for the graphics card it didn't change or spike at all because it wasn't being uh, stress tested like the CPU was now we're going to go ahead and use Fermark, this program over here, all you need to do is hit GPU stress test and it will start testing the GPUs. And then just click OK over here. Now this looks kind of funky, some creepy furry eyeball looking thing. Okay, now you'll see my temperatures are actually rising. It also tells me the temperatures in here. As you can see, I've got two cards. Um, only some versions of, I think it's a modified version of this Fermark will actually stress test both cards at once. So um, I haven't downloaded that version at the moment, but you can check it out on their page and find that. At the moment, it's just going to use my pr primary graphics processor, the one that the screen is running off. So you can see it's going up to about 60. And again, uh, another thing to do is to Google the maximum safe temperature for your graphics card. So mine is an AMD Radeon R7 260X. So I'm going to go ahead and look. Radeon R7 260X max safe temp. Or I'll just do max temp. Okay. Let's see what we get. So yeah, AMD ATI graphics cards are well known to run over 100 degrees. I would never recommend going over 100, but you know, below 100 or 90 degrees is fairly safe. So we're at 70 degrees now, which is a very good temperature to be running at under full load. Now this will keep raising for a while, but I've actually tested these cards before and they didn't get much above 75 or 80 degrees. Um, again, with the like with the CPU stress testing on heavy load, uh, I would also recommend running this program for half an hour to an hour just to 
test in a short period of time that your components are safe. So I'm going to go ahead and close this now. And basically what we've found from these tests so far is that uh, my graphics card is running absolutely perfectly. There's no overheating at all there, no concerns. Uh, however, my processor is running substantially over the top end of the temperature requirements or the safe temperature limits. So if you're going to be gaming or processing, rendering for a very long time, you know, hours and hours at a time as a lot of people do, uh, I would be concerned with the temperatures that I've got. As you can see, one of my, uh, my package temps or my other cores got up to 89 degrees and that's you know more than 10 degrees over the recommended maximum. So from what I would gather here is that we would have to do something to deal with that. You can buy, um, well firstly the first thing to do which is the easiest and the cheapest would be get some compressed air or even just a anti-static brush and clean out the dust from your uh, CPU fan or inside your computer, just give it a nice clean. I'll post a video of how to do this uh, in another episode, but for the people who know how to do it for now, just give it a, uh, your CPU a nice clean, make sure there's no dust or blockages around it or even that nothing's stopping the fan from spinning. And um, if that is your problem, run these tests again and you might notice a difference. If you don't, however, what you need to do is change the thermal paste, especially if you haven't done it in a while or if you've never changed it since you got your computer. Um, change the thermal paste because that can often will make up to a 10 degrees uh, temperature drop. So in this case, uh, dropping from 89 degrees to 79 degrees would be quite uh, significant and we would still be running a little bit over the maximum safe temp but not a scary amount. However, lastly, if you really want to keep your, your CPU or your components in good condition and get the maximum lifetime as possible out of them, I'd recommend in this system that we change it to a aftermarket CPU cooler. That can be an air cooler or it can be, my favorite is closed loop water cooling systems. They're very easy to install and very efficient. And we might drop, you know, with some new thermal paste and a cooler 20 to 25 degrees off the processor. So um, then we'll be operating in really good temperature ranges and wouldn't have to be concerned with it for a long time. And if you have any problems like um, crashing or stalling or the computer slowing down, you will likely see that those have gone away now. And it's a relatively cheap fix. I mean, overall, if you wanted to go the water cooling route, you could get some thermal paste. I recommend. Arctic Silver MX5 and some and a uh, closed loop water cooler for about $100 Australian and that would fix your problems.